As they say in astronomy, check your local listings. A good astronomy website will tell you if you can see the rare event as tonight gives way to tomorrow morning. In some places, it's going to be possible to view an eclipse of the moon and the rising sun at the same time. It takes careful watching of both horizons. And there shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory, and when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. Well, they could be just really beautiful cosmological events, or are they tied to biblical prophecy? Today is the first of four blood moon eclipses, rare occurrences that some biblical scholars say signal earth shattering events, particularly when they happen around the Jewish high holy days. So what can this blood moon be telling us? Mark Biltz is a pastor and author of the book Blood Moons, Decoding the Eminent Heavenly Signs. And he joins me now from Seattle. Welcome, Pastor. Well, hi, thank you so much for having me on. So t tell us exactly what blood moons are. A blood moon simply is a total lunar eclipse as compared to a partial lunar eclipse. And what does it look like in the sky? I'm assuming it looks red. That's why we call it a blood moon. Right, exactly. The longer light rays uh, are red that go around uh, the atmosphere of the Earth and reflect on the moon when it's in the Earth's shadow. And now you say that this is something that is signals a biblical prophecy. Is that right? Am, am I getting that right? Or it just signals something large that's going to happen, significant that's going to happen? Yes, I believe it's not necessarily going to happen on the day of the eclipse, but in the Bible. In Genesis 1.14, God created the sun and the moon, it says, for signals on basically Passover, on his feast days, his appointed times. So for me, if that's what the Bible says, that we need to be watching when those events happen. Now, they, uh, we've had these four blood moons, which is a tetrad, which is four occurring in a, in a specific um, uh, a period of time. This has happened before, right? Over the last 2,000 years, there's been 62 tetrads, but only eight times have they occurred on the biblical holidays. And in the last three of those, uh, they've had great uh, significance for the nation of Israel. What has happened before, and when did those things happen? Sure. The last time you had these four blood moons on Passover and Tabernacles uh, in a, within a year and a half was 1967 when Israel captured Jerusalem. And the time before that was right after they became a nation in 48. Uh, right before that was in 1493 and 94 during the times of the Spanish Inquisition. When will the next one happen on the High Holy Day? It'll be on the Feast of Tabernacles, uh, I believe October 8th of this year, and then again on Passover next year, and then again on the Feast of Tabernacles in 2015. What's incredible about that one, that's like the grand finale that will be seen in Jerusalem on the Feast of Tabernacles when all the Jews are outside looking up at the sky, and it will be a super moon. This is going to be a super moon. The moon will be at perigee, or its closest point to Earth for the entire year. What could be... What could be the signal here? What is, if this is a signal of something, what could God be telling us? Well, I think over this next year and a half, how I kind of see these four blood moons uh, in a row is going to be a signal uh, from the book of Joel, where it talks about the moon turning to blood. It's in the context of God judging the nations that are trying to divide the land of Israel. So for me, I think this could be a heavenly warning sign to Israel not to divide their land, as well as to the nations that God may judge those who are trying to divide their land, which is exactly what the big push is. You know, one of the stories I saw online about the blood moons, the four blood moons, said, you know, could it be the end of the world? Is this judgment day? Is this, uh, you know, the apocalypse and all of that? Is that what we're looking at here? Or should we see something a little more earthly, earthbound? 
a little more earthbound. I don't think it's the end of the world at all. Uh, I'm not into to that mentality. Uh, I, I believe that we're going to be around for a long time. But I, I do believe what this is signaling uh, is a couple of things. One of them, when you look at the pattern, and I like to stay with the science. I mean, I don't control an eclipse. I don't control the calendar, and I'm not the one who wrote the scriptures. I'm just connecting the dots and saying, based uh, scientifically on past patterns, it meant a war with Israel in 48. It meant a war with Israel in 67. Uh, there's a, a, a probability that we could be looking at a war in Israel, as well as the economy crashing when you look at past uh, statistics. Do you... I mean, it's obvious that a lot of things are just normal occurring um, patterns. Um, I mean, and if this happens, if something big happens, you can always say, oh, it's the four blood moons, of course, we should have seen it coming. But there's so many tumultuous things happening in the world today. I mean, it, 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 it could be nothing. I mean, it could just mean, well, there's four blood moons. And are we making too much out of it? Are we trying to connect the dots too much? Well, uh, all I'm trying to say is that God is the one who said he created the sun and the moon to send signals on his feast days. Now, I jokingly tell everyone that we are a truly a nonprofit ministry, and I'm not prophesying anything's going to happen. Uh, but at the same time, uh, I think we, I see these as a warning of our red lines that we should be careful and be watching. Uh, not that anything's going to definitely happen, and I would hope nothing does. But I do think that we need to be watching uh, what could be occurring and not saying, like you said, that something that happens def that's is definitely a sign that that was going to happen. Yeah, I mean, you remember when the, um, the, uh, the, 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 the whole um, math of 2012 happened and they thought the calendar was going to come to an end, the Aztec sign, that was the Aztec sign? Right, um, the Mayans. The Mayans, right, the Mayan sign. And everybody was looking for some sort of sign, and every little thing that happens, oh, this must be, you know, the 2012. I mean, isn't it possible that we're jumping to conclusions just like that, that nothing will happen um, that would not have happened if there hadn't been a blood moon? A great question. Uh, the problem is the Mayan calendar isn't the one God was using. So I, I, people get all excited about the wrong calendar. Uh, the Islamic calendar is based totally on the moon. Uh, the calendar that the world uses is based totally on the sun. So they're all on the wrong calendars that God is using. Uh, God is using the biblical calendar, which is based on both the sun and the moon. Uh, and that's the one that I would be paying attention to. Uh, so uh, that's the one I go by. Yeah, you know, it's very interesting. You talk about the calendars, and, and this is one of the rare years that the uh, Orthodox Easter and the um, and uh, the Western Christian denominations, their Easter are the same, plus Passover begins at the same time. All of these things are sort of converging at the same time. Do you see that as meaning something? Uh, it very well might, but I think what's interesting, to give you an idea how the church in one sense is on the wrong calendar, and this was due to anti-Semitism a couple thousand years ago, uh, in two years from now, Easter is a month before Passover. So here we're celebrating the resurrection a month before he even dies. <laughs> Very interesting. Well, the book is called Blood Moons, Decoding the Imminent Heavenly Signs. And Pastor Mark Bilt, thank you for being on A Spirit of Debate. Very interesting stuff. I'm sure we are going to revisit this as we get more and more of these blood moons uh, coming into fruition. Thank you. Thank you so much.